Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm doing a product review slash comparison between the Thermal Master Thor infrared camera and the FLIR E6 XT. So bear with me today. I got a lot to say. I may ramble a little bit. That's okay. To start off, who is Thermal Master? I've done reviews for them before. They make infrared cameras. I've reviewed their tiny little cameras that plug into your mobile device. I've done a couple of those, but now they're getting into the handheld thermal game and the product they sent me, yes, they sent it to me. They said, Ruben, please review this product. We don't care if it's good or bad. If you hate it, just be honest. Give us an unbiased review of it. So that's what I'm doing here today. I'm not getting any compensation for this review other than the camera itself, which I did not ask for. They just sent it to me. So Thermal Master, the camera I'm reviewing is the Thor 001. It has a brother called the Thor 002. And the differences between these two cameras is pretty minor. They've got a spec sheet, the most notable, the 001 comes with a macro lens. You can snap this onto the camera. You do this and you change one little setting inside the camera and now you're in macro mode. I guess it's cool if you're into that kind of thing, but as a home inspector, I can't imagine why I would ever need macro mode. So I'm going to take this macro lens, I'm going to put it back in the case and I will surely never take it out again. Maybe if you're, a, if you're a technician who works on circuit boards or something, maybe that could be useful, but that's the most notable difference between the one and the two. You can see the rest of the spec sheet here. We'll scroll through this very quickly. Most of the specs are the same. The most notable specification difference is that the one has a slightly better thermal sensitivity than the two. Now, as for price, the one retails for $599, whereas the two retails for $399. So for all intents and purposes, I, I could be reviewing about a, a $400 camera right now. So that's the camera. That's the basics of who this company is. Let's, let's take a look at a few different things. First, the case that it comes in. It's this huge, big, rugged case. It's padded. I think I could have my camera inside here. I could drop it off of a building and it would be perfectly fine. It, like I said, it's got the macro lens. It comes with a USB-C cable. It's a rugged looking cable. I like that. And the cable plugs into a, of course, a USB-C port right here. Note the dust cover. See how it just kind of flops around when I open that? I love that. I'm going to compare this camera to the FLIR E6. I'm going to do a lot of comparisons. It's technically the E6 X, XT, the E6 XT. I'm just going to call it the E6 for brevity throughout this video. But this is the FLIR E6 and take a look at the difference between the two. The Thor is much bigger. You see where it gets its name. It's like Thor's hammer. This thing is a monster. I don't like the size, not going to lie. I want the smallest camera possible. I want something I can easily slip into my tool belt. I do not like the big bulkiness of this thing, but that's where we're at. Okay, back to what happens when you open this up. Okay, we open that. It's kind of floppy. You can put your cable in there. We're cool. But then you take the E6, you open this up, and... It wants to close. It's springy. It pushes itself closed on you. If I take, let me grab a cable here. If I take a charging cable and this takes the micro USB, who uses that anymore? We'll put that micro, C, micro USB cable in there. It wants to push on that cable and you see how the cable is like pushing against the charging port. I've had a bunch of home inspectors in my company ruin the charging ports on their cameras just because of that. It's dumb and my inspectors have resorted to cutting off the dust cover, thus preventing any uh, dust coverage, or they've taken a hair binder and they just hold it open 
the whole time they use the camera and they leave it there. And at that point, you might as well cut the dust cover off. So terrible design on the E6, uh, much, much better design on the Thor camera. For the E6, you have internal storage only. For the Thor, note here, we've got a micro, I'm never good at this, let's see, take my finger out. We've got a micro SD card, that's what it has for storage. I love that, it means that you can swap out cards if you want. If you've got memory issues, you can format the card, you can put a new one in there. I would probably just leave the card in all the time, and it comes with the card, by the way. 32 gigabyte storage card. That's more than I think you could ever possibly fill up in a year of doing home inspections because the image size, the file sizes of the images are quite small. Uh, I, I think you could probably hold about a billion of them on there. I'm exaggerating. But I, I like the fact that it comes with that. And if I were, if I were going to be using this day to day, I think I would just leave the card in there and I would transfer all the images with a USB cable because I don't want to risk accidentally leaving my card at home. Ask me how I know. Yes, I've done that as a home inspector on my regular cameras. So that's a little bit about the form and factor. Something that I don't like about this camera, and I'm talking about the negatives, is the boot up time. You hit the power on button, you give it a long press, and it takes approximately 25 seconds to boot up. Whereas the E6, you press that, the, the new version of the E6, you press that power button, even if it's been off for a day, seven seconds to boot up. Very quick. I do not like how long the, thermo, the Thor Thermal Master takes to boot up. However, the good news is that after that initial 25 second boot up, Anytime you want to shut your camera down, let's say, you know, you're done doing this for a home inspection and you're going to, going to go over to this and you're not going to use your camera for a while. You just give one quick press of the power button and it puts it into sleep mode and it stays in sleep mode for 20 minutes. And after that, it goes into the long sleep or it, it powers down. But to turn it back on, you just give it a quick press and you're back up and running. So I think for home inspections, I would mostly just use that. I'd, I'd be annoyed with the first 25 seconds, and then after that, we're good. We're good to go. So that's, uh, that's a slight annoyance. Some cool stuff this has. It has a built-in LED light. You just give, well, it's got, there's the light. You give it a quick press and it turns the light on. If you give it a long press, it turns on a laser. Check that out. I love the fact that it comes with a laser. The first infrared camera I ever had about 20 years ago had a laser and no camera that I have ever owned since came with one. Kind of missed it. I like being able to know exactly what I'm pointing my camera at as I'm doing home inspections. So it's a cool feature to have. And when it comes to transferring images, getting stuff off of here, on other devices, if you don't want to use a cable, you can also use the app that comes with it. And I thought I would just do this in live time to show you how this works. I'm going to go in the settings on this camera and I'm going to turn on my Wi-Fi. And now I'm going to go on my phone and I'm going to connect to the camera's Wi-Fi network. Let's see, where is it? Thor's blah, 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 connect. Okay, we're connected. Oh, yeah, okay, we're connected. The software was a little bit of an issue. I mean, once, once I got it going, it was fine. But to get there, it says on the website that you need to download this app. You go on, I, I'm an Android user, I go on the Google Play Store, search for the app, cannot find it. I had to reach out for, to the manufacturer, they sent me a link, they said you can download the app from our website. So you're, you end up using your mobile device to download an SDK file directly to your device and then you install it from there. And so then when you're doing a direct install outside of the Play Store, of course, your device is going to squawk at you. It says, this is potentially harmful and unsafe. We don't recommend you do this. If you really want to do it, accept this, blah, blah, blah. And so I did it. I installed it and everything worked flawlessly. I mean, it was, it was slick, it was perfect. So I'm gonna navigate to the app. I'm gonna open the app up here. It opens pretty quickly. I'll hit search device. 
search device, and there it comes up with the Thor camera. I hit the camera, connect, and takes about, well, where'd it go? Connect. Oh, I hit the wrong button, sorry. Hit connect, and, oh, you <laughs> I did it right. You're seeing that I had the menu open, and now on my phone, it's showing you exactly what the camera is seeing. How slick is that? So you can hold the camera in one hand, you can be pointed around in the attic, you can be looking at your phone at the same time. It's, it's flawless. It has worked just the way it should. You've got an image capture button, you've got a record video option on here, and you can also record video directly to the camera. That's yet another thing that the E6 does not do. There are a million menu options in here. You can make it display the battery life on all of your images. You can show the temperature range. You can show the min and the max. You can show spot temperature. You can show all these different things and you can turn them off one by one. It remembers all of your settings. Every time you reboot this device, it knows exactly where you were. Love that. And it also offers, I mean, I don't even know if I'd call it a feature. It, it offers digital zoom, but if you know anything about cameras, you know that digital zoom is absolutely worthless. It, it, it goes up to 4x zoom, and as you can see in this example here, all it does is make your image look terrible. <laughs> I, so I can't imagine a world in which I would ever use the digital zoom, worthless feature. And then it offers image blending, while the E6 offers something called MSX technology. It's where they take an infrared image and then they highlight all of the high contrast areas in an image to make the image kind of pop. It looks a lot better. What every other manufacturer besides FLIR does is, well, at least that I know of, what they all do is they offer something called image blending where they take an infrared image and they take a regular visual image and they mix the two together and you end up losing a lot of the infrared details when that happens. So I'd say the FLIR camera definitely has an advantage on the image quality when using MSX technology. At least it feels like a better image. It's more visually pleasing, however, it does not give you more actual data on your images when it comes to finding defects. So let's talk about specs a little bit. The resolution of the E6 is 240 by, oh gosh, I gotta look it up, 240 by 180 on the E6, while the Thor offers 256 by 192. But the manufacturer also has this technology, they call it the X3 technology, where they upscale this through some type of software algorithm, and they, they claim a resolution of 512 by 384 with this turned on. Does it work? I'll show you some infrared image comparisons and you can decide for yourself. The short answer, skip to the end here, is yes, I think it definitely works. And then also you have a huge advantage with the Thor camera when it comes to thermal sensitivity. Now thermal sensitivity, that's, that's one of the most important markers with an infrared camera. It tells you the camera's ability to detect subtle differences in temperature, thermal anomalies, which is the whole reason you're using an infrared camera. The rating on the Thor is less than 35 millikelvins, while the E6 is less than 60 millikelvins. So we're talking almost twice the thermal sensitivity. You also have a much higher refresh rate with the Thor camera. As you can see, the camera is going side to side here. The E6 looks downright laggy. The refresh rate on the Thor is 25 hertz, while the E6 is only 9 hertz. Huge difference. Okay, now let's get to the most important part, comparing images head to head. Let's see what they look like, and we're doing straight infrared images, so we're comparing apples to apples between the two cameras. As you scroll through here, I'd say we have a distinct advantage with the Thor camera. These images look crisp and clear. 
while the E6, it, by comparison, they look just a little bit fuzzy and you can't pick out the edges nearly as nice. And then this last one, I wanna pause on this one. This is an image of my carpeted stairway and my dog had taken a big drink of water and then he went downstairs and that's basically his slobber all over the carpet from about a half hour ago and it just pops with the Thor camera but it's not nearly as easy to see with the E6. And that right there is one of the reasons that you get a huge advantage when using a camera with higher resolution and better thermal sensitivity. So my conclusion is that this is a fantastic camera. Right now, it's retailing for, well, the, the 002 retails for $399 on Amazon. There's also a 5% off coupon that they're offering, and I will put that in the video description. So basically, you can get the 002 for about $379, while the E6 retails for a lot closer to $2,000. So you could get a whole fleet of the Thor cameras for the price of one single E6. I'd say you got a huge advantage there. And really the only places where the E6 has an advantage is the MSX images, smaller size and faster boot up. Aside from that, you get more of everything with the Thor camera. So that's what I got for you today. I think this is a fantastic camera and I may end up adding these to our fleet. Okay, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.